welcome back to the weekly show, everybody. So good to be back here with all of you. Uh, I took a week off, uh, and uh, we're back now with the SAT coming in this week, uh, ready to have a fresh new show as college admissions decisions from so many of my students come in. And I'm trying to respond to as many of your questions as we can. And we try, my team and I try to focus on recurring questions for the topics for shows. And that's where we lead today to Carnegie Mellon University, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, for the computer science major. So many of my students in past years, people writing into the show, people who've been in my main building, have noticed that so many of my college planning students have gotten into Carnegie Mellon University for computer science, and they want their children to go there, or students asking who want to go there, and they ask me to do a show, just like I did for New York University, NYU Stern Business, to do a show on Carnegie Mellon computers, my com Carnegie Mellon computer science admits. So here we are, and that's what I'm going to focus on today. Show the common traits of my admits who got into Carnegie Mellon University. So first off, I want to start off from a statistical point of view. Carnegie Mellon uh, University, located in Pittsburgh, very prestigious school. It is not an Ivy League school, but is what I often call a near Ivy. Super competitive, uh, very popular, but also very rigorous. So because it's rigorous, you're definitely going to look for first higher level statistics. SAT definitely nearing the 1540, 1550 range to be in the top percentile. Uh, top notch GPA, 4.0 GPA or higher. Uh, really almost perfect GPA, almost perfect scores in math classes in school. And... Uh, Definitely going to look for students at the top of their graduating class. Uh, definitely top of their class when they're applying. Top at least 10% usually from what I, my students have gotten in. And uh, ACT definitely going to be 34 and above. Uh, for that. I'm talking for the top 25th percentile to have the best chance of getting in. Okay. But beyond the statistics, what I, you've heard me, if you've listened to my show, if you've been to one of my speeches, you often hear me say... Statistics just get you in the door to be considered and being a good fit for a school's culture will get you admitted. And a reminder of what I always talk about and probably the one of the uh, most important things I always say is that remember when you see a school's top 25th percentile statistics, even their top 50th percentile students who are admitted, that's the decision of statistics for the students who are admitted. Most people with those stats don't get admitted. So I often say, because oftentimes people who aren't working with me or just applying to a college will say, okay, I, for a very competitive school like Carnegie Mellon or NYU or any Ivy League school, they'll say, okay, I have a 1550 and I have a 4.0 GPA. I'm within the top 25th percentile. So that's, that's true, and that, but most people with those stats do not get in. 4.0 GPA unweighted, of course, going to be higher weighted, but even within that, that does not guarantee you admission. That just gets you in the first step to be considered. So the next question is, what are the common traits for a school once Carnegie Mellon has these students with high stats, who do they want actually in their university since they have a high, uh, they, have a hot, they have a lot of options and a uh, high, very high applicant pool uh, how do they choose? So here's what they're looking for. The first thing to keep in mind is Carnegie Mellon is rooted in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Its culture is very teamwork based, and that is rooted in Pittsburgh's history of an industrial history where teamwork was essential in the steel mills. Uh, and in the steel mill culture that came out of the Industrial Revolution in Pittsburgh, workers uh, combined all their strengths to, uh, to build an industry. And Carnegie Mellon is an outgrowth of that where students bring their technical skills together uh, to innovate, to solve problems, and push the boundaries of computer science. Carnegie Mellon sees itself on the forefront of technical change in society. Artificial intelligence right now is at the forefront. They are right on the forefront of that change. And they see themselves as really as part of a leader in the technology revolution that's happening just like Pittsburgh was itself was a leader in the Industrial Revolution that happened in the late 19th century, early 20th century in the United States. Again, that culture of bringing people of diverse talents 
unique talents together to create a product um, that grew out of the steel mill culture is is embedded in the environment at Carnegie Mellon. So Carnegie Mellon is definitely look for students that can work well in teams. Lone Rangers are not their first choice. People have a demonstrated history of working in teams either through team-based project, through hackathons, uh, at, or working on apps together in high school, working on teams in multiple uh, in, in multiple uh, environments is a great thing for them to see. And not just students that will say, okay, I'll work in teams, but actually embrace teamwork who they can see through their essays, through their recommendation letters, have a, have a, have a real, real uh, liking for and affinity for teamwork and seeing the value of teamwork can disappear in a team in the sense that they want to give the team credit um, and don't have to stand out as Lone Rangers. Of course, uh, when I, you know, when, when I, and, and this, of course, this doesn't override the need for academic excellence, for high SAT, ACT scores, and for rigorous, you know, AP scores, fives and fours in top math classes and science classes, uh, calculus, calculus BC. Of course, they're going to want that. But once they get past that again, teamwork. Now, what, Carnegie, what I've noticed from my Carnegie Mellon admits is all of them have demonstrated throughout high, high school, through their essays, a really concern for uh, ethics in technology, for their computer in computer science, especially with which we're talking about, they're going to want to see students that value, who can think critically about technology, its impact on society, and whether that's through topics like bias auditing and AI, which I talk a lot about in another show. One of my uh, admits to Carnegie Mellon last year, fantastic student. He took an early interest in ninth grade in bias auditing, making sure artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence was, uh, you know, he took an interest in researching how AI could be improved to mitigate uh, bias in it. So uh, the responsible use of data, uh, um, applicants who engage with, you know, really can show in computer science how the, the, the impact of technology uh, and its, uh, its ethical implications for society. They want students that have awareness of that because they want students to come to Carnegie Mellon and work on projects, learn more, and use their Carnegie Mellon education to not just improve the world technologically, but improve how technology is interwoven with ethics so it's used responsibly. There's been so much talk in our society about tech AI and its, its um, ethical implications. They want Carnegie Mellon, definitely computer science, you know, look for students that understand this, interested in furthering positive relationship between AI and, uh, and ethics. Then also, Carnegie Mellon, all, what I've noticed in my admits also for computer science at Carnegie Mellon is they've shown a demonstration for problem solving skills, algorithmic thinking, a passion for tackling challenges. That can be demonstrated through hackathons. That can be demonstrated in, in working on an app with their friends and, and working on projects in school, doing research, that really says there's problems. I'm not gonna wait for somebody else to go solve them. I wanna figure out ways to solve them. I love the idea of being involved in problem solving because we all know technology solves a lot of problems. Now technology does create problems sometimes, we're talking about AI, but and that creates new problems to solve. And they really want students that understand that technology is a never ending problem solving venture because once you solve one problem, New problems arise, and, and people who go to Carnegie Mellon understand this and embrace that, okay? So I've talked about a lot of the academic rigor they're looking for. My ad, I've seen in my admins for Carnegie Mellon Computer Science, the innovation and problem solving. I mentioned earlier the Strong Math Foundation. They have, they're definitely taking higher level calculus courses. Most of my admits for Carnegie Mellon Computer Science have demonstrated, have taken linear algebra, or can demonstrate they've done math, can do math as high as linear algebra goes, uh, or they can do uh, uh, a multivariable calculus, really can uh, definitely do that at a high level. They've demonstrated high efficiency in math and computer science classes, and also experience beyond their schoolwork. They maybe outside of school took an academic class in higher level math, a voluntary class in linear algebra I've seen, They've learned higher level languages in computer science. They really push themselves mathematically and with computer science. Now, besides all this though, what they're also, I've also noticed in my admits and what Carnegie Mellon looks for in their computer science admits is they really wanna see a passion for technical skills, 
uh, demonstrated a technical passion for sure. They uh, ha have definitely shown they've actively pursued computer science outside the classroom. That can be shown in coding projects. That can uh, be shown in research they've done, internships they've done in computer science, hackathons I mentioned. They've, they've been involved in Olympiads. Uh, even if they learn skills on their own and they demonstrate they learn those skills by creating an app and talking about how many downloads they got on that app, demonstrating proficiency in that app, showing that app to their guidance counselors who can write about that in their letter. So not just demonstrating I have a passion, as I mentioned, but their passion led to skills that were used positively and their teachers can write about them in their recommendation letters. They can write about them in their, the guidance counselors can write about them. One of my students developed an unbelievable app uh, that showed uh, he was uh, tracking, uh, helping uh, elderly people uh, track their health, uh, you know, and really use, it was amazing. They could put all their uh, medicines they were taking in an app, developed it, and a lot of, had a lot of downloads. His te one of his guidance counselors was using the app, wrote about it in his letter. It was amazing. So demonstrating your, te not just technical passion in your essay saying I have passion, demonstrating you took the time to create something, take classes outside of, school uh, and develop your skills very good. As I mentioned, all of this combined with the collaborative mindset I mentioned, again, CMU, uh, outgrowth of Pittsburgh steel mill culture, combining talents, um, and, and really showing that they work with others on these things in competitions and research. One of my students who was admitted to Carnegie Mellon early decision last year, talked about how he was in hackathons, amazing things, uh, was a leader, he inspired others. He also led a, a project in his garage where he uh, did board games and they talked, about, they did all these computer science things in his garage, computer science competitions, created his own competition. Pretty amazing and he uh, took pictures of it and he uh, even invited some school teachers over there. They wrote about it, I know, in their rec letters. Pretty amazing, They're just people that are comfortable working with others they can joke with others, have fun with others. They can see that you work well. You could fit right into the culture there. This goes to Carnegie Mellon, MIT, but especially Carnegie Mellon, uh, we're talking about here, computer science majors. They can really work well with people of diverse backgrounds uh, and lead others. This is definitely a big part of what Carnegie Mellon Computer Science looks for in their, in their majors and what I've seen in my applicants and my admins, okay? Um, also, one thing they like to see in their admits, uh, I've seen in my admits, and they definitely want to see, and we, when I help students with their essays, we write about this, they want to see that students are up to date on the changes in technology. They really are up to date on current trends. One thing I tell my students who are applying with me, read the technology section of the New York Times every day, be aware of what's happening in technology as a computer science major, and we write about it there in their essays, but they want to see the students when they are up to date on those things, they are, um, they can publish pages. I own a research, president of a research journal. My students get published there. Try, students can try to get published. Showing they're up to date on trends in technology is really, really good. Um, so, and uh, this is something they look for. Now, all of this combined with what I've seen in my applicants, I'm kind of coming back to this, is computer science applicants for Carnegie Mellon uh, that I've, computer science admits that I've seen, they're definitely someone that really, really, they can really are self-directed learners. They don't have to wait for instruction. If you've listened to my episode on NYU Stern Business School, they look for self-starters. They on their own learn um, systems architecture, ML, uh, different fields. Uh, so one of my students admitted to Carnegie Mellon took a real interest in NLP, uh, fantastic field, learned about it. And they went out, and as I mentioned, they took courses from Coursera, took summer courses, just wanted to enhance their knowledge. And this doesn't mean starting in 11th grade and, and your summer for senior year. It means starting earlier, showing a passion. It goes, well, if you do it too late, it looks like a vanity project. If you took the time in your summer to, um, to, to learning about it, that's very, very important. Uh, and when students write their essay, uh, they, they want to definitely talk in the Carnegie Mellon, I've seen in my admins, talking about their love for collaboration, how they want to embrace Carnegie Mellon's collaborative culture. When, they, when they're dealing with their teachers, should, you should be definitely in class, you want to go to Carnegie Mellon, be seen as someone that embraces teamwork. Teachers can write about you in your letter, great with others, very empathetic, uh, can help, very helpful to others, can bounce ideas, it can help 
uh, can help others grow, lets others help them grow. Okay? So they really want to see that uh, their teachers describe them as someone that can work well with others and be uh, impacted by others and impact others. And I mentioned that the biggest thing, someone asked me, Mr. Rubber, what would you say is the most common trend of all your Carnegie Mellon advocates? All of these have been very common. Again, academic rigor, working well with others, self-directed learning, uh, a love for collaboration, a really embracing of it, competitive in the computer science field, a demonstration of skills, demonstration of passion, but definitely I've seen lately, Carnegie Mellon is looking for admits that really understand the ethical implications of AI, write about it, talk about career aspirations of wanting to not just make a lot of money and then be prosperous, which is fine and important, but also wanting to be a leader in AI, a leader in technology, leader in computer science, but an ethical leader, a socially responsible leader. And seeing that, uh, and seeing themselves as as people that can uh, lead the way for to steer computer science and the software field in a direction of making society just and making sure everyone is treated ethically and fairly and making sure technology is used as a tool for good. This is the common traits I've seen in all my admits to Carnegie Mellon University, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Fantastic, top-notch school. High SAT scores, high SAT scores, high scores in APs, fives and fours, AP scholar level. Great recommendation letters. Remember, the word great is subjective. But great in this term doesn't mean he's smart or she's smart. It means leader, works well with others, easy to learn, teachable, coachable uh, leader. One of my Carnegie Mellon admits from last year, he uh, was on a group in his high school called High Tops. They were really teaching tolerance to people, uh, teaching people to be better people, uh, relate better to others, breaking down barriers of misunderstanding. School, top colleges, IV schools like Carnegie Mellon, always looking for kids that can be ethical leaders, just good kids that are gonna set a good example for others. So remember, stats is only one piece, but do not count on your stats to get you into Carnegie Mellon. If you wanna get in there, start early, doing the things I'm talking about here. Make sure your teachers know about the projects you're working on when they write their letters. Make sure you're seen as a collaborative, ethical leader in school that others can look up to and sets a good example for others. Okay? Carnegie Mellon University, great school. I hope this was helpful for all of you who have dreams of going there. If you have questions for me or my staff, feel free to message in. Those of you who have been asking about working with me, feel free to contact us. I'll be glad to have a consultation with you, help your child get into a top school. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a fantastic day.